both the United States and the European Union aim, to aim for zero carbon emissions by 2050. That means 26 years from now. In order to achieve this target, these governments have to adopt radical plans that will completely change our way of life if they are actually implemented. Don't underestimate this. Our entire prosperity relies on a fossil-based economy. Net zero to any freedom-loving mind sounds like a dangerous experiment. But what if you wanted more control over people? Then suddenly it starts to make sense. If carbon emissions have to be eliminated, but everything we do leads to carbon emissions, that means the government is aiming for total control. In the Netherlands, carbon emissions have only been reduced 22% compared to 1990. The targets are 55% in 2030. That means only six years from now, and 90% in 2040. These targets are really impossible to reach, but governments are serious about them, and that means that they will consider radical ways of implementing them. How convenient that the infrastructure already exists. How so? Because of COVID, of course. All across Europe, you needed an app on your phone with a QR code to enter essential parts of society. Originally, it, this was only meant to ease traveling within the EU. At that time, the Dutch Minister of Health said it should be illegal to use it for other purposes. A few months later, he broke his word. The QR code was suddenly required to enter sport clubs, restaurants, and bars. People without this so-called COVID passport were treated like second-class citizens, outlaws. The gradual introduction of the QR code in all segments of society is a good example of function creep. Once the infrastructure exists, the government will always use it to increase power and decrease freedom. But there are more developments on the way. The European Union is implementing the so-called digital identity wallet. In this wallet, all sorts of personal information will be stored from your passport to information about your health. Another important development is the introduction of the so-called central bank digital currency, or CBDC. This means money issued by the state, not by commercial banks. The CBDC will likely become part of the digital identity app. Perhaps not immediately, but eventually it will. This means all your information is stored on one app. What would be the next step? How would this be used to decrease freedom? Well, I don't want to be called a conspiracy theorist. I don't know. So I will let Dutch top banker Barbara Basma do the talking. I quote her. We should divide the remaining carbon emission rights. Every citizen should receive a fixed amount of emission rights. You put it in a carbon wallet, as you can call it. End of quote. So here we have it, a carbon wallet. But there is no, but there's one thing Basma doesn't say. This idea would require total surveillance of consumption of all human activity. Otherwise, we cannot possibly know whether someone exceeds the carbon credit, the carbon budget. What if the digital identity wallet is the carbon wallet? Then we are moving towards a world in which the government knows everything about you. A world which the freedoms that we now cherish have evaporated. Then we are moving towards a world in which you are refused gas in line at the gas station when the wallet knows you have already emitted too much carbon this month. Perhaps you have been eating steak or you have been on an airplane. Then we are moving towards the Chinification of the West. And mind you, the digital identity wallet and CBDC are no conspiracy theories. They are already being implemented. The carbon emissions reduction targets are no pipeline dreams. They are already 
US and EU law, also already implemented. So you do the math. A total power grab over all our lives could be in the making. The coming years will be the years of the showdown. Either we drop net zero targets and climate communism altogether, or we will face another, an, another panic-induced totalitarian takeover. And this time, it will be permanent.